everybody. Hey, Kathy. Um, Kathy might be the only one in here right now, or at least the only one uh, chatting, and I see Jay backstage. Um, but, well, suddenly it jumped up to three people. Okay. So, uh, people may be waiting for me to get my typical spiel out of the way before they come in here, because nobody wants to hear me talking forever. So, hey, Blissful. Hey, Batman. Um, so, tonight, we're going to be watching Stir of Echoes, and Jay's going to be joining me. Um, and anybody else that would like to join in, you can let me know at any point in time, as long as it's not, you know, just a few minutes before the movie's over, because you won't be, be able to be on here very long. Um, I am watching the uh the blu-ray that i have or i've had for a while uh Lionsgate put this out um tomorrow night will be night riders george romero's night riders and we'll all want to kill ed harris on this you know when we watch this because i'm remembering what jay said last night <laughs> But um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun this weekend, and I need to have a lot of fun before I have to go back to work, because, um, boy, am I dreading it. <laughs> but my mom always says if you take, you know, several days off in a row, then you're going to, you know, hate going back. But, you know, we need to take our vacations and and stuff like that. Hey, Chris. Chris says, hey, Dana, I love this movie. I introduced it to CJ not long ago. Yeah, this is a fantastic movie. And if you've not seen it before, um, I think you're really going to enjoy it. Me and Jay, I'll try not to spoil anything for you as we go along, uh, at least with not without warning you first. Um, but before we get started, um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add Jay on here, though. Hey, Jay. Hey, Dana! And uh, I wanted to show something that people may or may not have seen on Facebook today. But I did my first sublimation tumbler today for my aunt. So let me go grab that so I can show you guys on camera. <coughs> I made me some air fryer banana nut muffins, so that's what I'm eating. <coughs> oh, goodness. I've got crumbs on my throat and it's making me cough. Did you say you had banana bread, Jay? Uh, banana bread muffins. I made the air. Oh, cool. They're not, they're not great, but they're okay. <coughs> Dana, mm -hmm. explain to me what does sublimation mean? <laughs> well, I'll try my best to explain this, Jay. Um, basically, from what I can understand about sublimation, is the ink that you use, which is not regular printer ink, it is actually called sublimation ink. And you can buy you sublimation paper and buy sublimation ink or you can buy a set that has the ink and the transfer paper. But the thing about sublimation ink is whatever you transfer it on, whether it's a t-shirt or a tumbler or a coffee cup or whatever, the ink soaks into whatever you're transferring the image onto. So I kind of like going underneath the skin in a way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, kind of like a tattoo or, you know, uh, something like that. But uh, this is the tumbler that I did today for my aunt. Those are her two dogs, Gizzy and Bella. Bella's the bottom one. She's the Pomeranian. They're both girls. Gizzy is the top one. Um and she wanted it to say, I just want to drink coffee and pet my dogs. Uh, so that's what I put on the other other side of it. Well, if it's not giving away a secret, how do you put it on the, uh, the tumbler? Okay, so 
not really a, bi a big secret. So if you had the sublimation paper and you had the sublimation ink and you basically, you don't have to buy a sublimation printer. Some people may think you do, but if you get a, I've got an Epson inkjet uh, 2800 and that's not the newest top of the line. But for now, it works for my purposes. So, you don't use the ink that comes with the printer. Keep that in mind. Don't uh, do what I almost did and fill up the tanks. Because what you do is you get these bottles of ink. They're not cartridges. And you fill each tank up. So, you have a black one, a magenta, a cyan, a and yellow i believe and you put all those colors in their respective tanks but you just need to set the ink that comes with that printer uh to the side maybe you can sell it or maybe you've got another epson inkjet printer that you can use because i have two i have one that i do for regular printing that has the inkjet ink in it then I have the sublimation printer back here that I only put sublimation in. You can't mix and match. You can't, you know, do regular printing out of recipes and do sublimation on the same printer. So make sure you keep that in mind um, if you're thinking about shopping around. So basically what you do is you create your design. And now I created this design from a picture that my aunt sent me and i went into photoshop but you don't have to use photoshop you can use whatever your favorite photo editing program is i just like using photoshop um and so i designed this in photoshop and this is a 16 ounce tumbler so what i had to do is do a little research to make sure i got the right size because as you can see, this fits pretty good on this tumbler, right? You know, we don't have any white space or where it's going over or anything's cut off or anything like that. So I learned a valuable lesson today because I was practicing printing it out on my regular printer before I did the sublimation thing. And I was like, why can't I get this the right size? Because you need like a, basically a six by nine and it needs to be in landscape. But then whenever I was trying to print it, I was trying to print it using the photo options on my computer and, and printer. And that don't work. Let me tell you that right off. It's not going to work. You're not going to be able to get it the right size. So what you need to do is make sure the design is still open in Photoshop or whatever photo editing program you're using. And you print that out and then it'll be the exact size you need. You may have to cut off some white space around it, but other than that, you should be good to go. Okay. So once you print it out on the sublimation paper, you have to put, oh, make sure if you've got any writing on it that you mirror it, you flip it, okay? Otherwise, this stuff ain't going, it's going to be backwards when you transfer it on there. So you take the transfer paper or sublimation paper, you put the image face down on your tumbler and you wrap it around and you make sure it's tight on there. Then you use what's called heat transfer tape and you make sure that that's taped tight on there. So you will have a seam right about here or so where the two ends of the page meet. So you want to put some heat transfer tape there, maybe put about three pieces. Okay. And then you want to put tape around the top to give it you know, some extra tightness and on the bottom. Okay. And then you want to put another layer just above that so you can fold it over. Okay. 
Then you got Jay's probably going to be sorry he asked this. <laughs> oh, I'm interested. I am. Then you take what's called butcher paper or wax paper, right? And you cut it to the size of whatever your your transfer is, whatever the picture size is or design, whatever you want to call it. And then you're going to wrap that around it to protect this and to protect whatever you're transferring it on. Because the heat press gets hot. It gets damn hot. And you got you to be really careful. So you don't want to burn your image. You don't want to burn whatever you're transferring this image onto or whatever. So the butcher paper protects it. So you use the heat transfer tape. You tape that around your transfer paper. Then comes the fun part of actually uh, transferring this. So I have a tumbler press with my heat press. So all I have to do is I take the tumbler press attachment and I unhook the t-shirt press part and then I just hook in, it just plugs into it basically, the tumbler press does. And make sure it's screwed on there tight Turn the heat press on, let it heat up. You want to set the temperature for 365 degrees and the time you want to set for 75 seconds. That seemed to work for me. And I watched a video to learn about that. So you want to put it seam side down and you want to press it for 75 seconds. Then you want to flip it over so that you can heat the other side and you'll do it for another 75 seconds and then wear the heat protectant gloves i bought me a pink pair because you're going to have to take this thing out of the tumbler press and you know flip it over and you don't want to burn your hands because that would hurt and also when you're taking it out of the tumbler press when you're done it's still going to be hot and it may still be hot when you start taking the butcher paper and the transfer sheet off, okay? And you'll know that you've done this right if when you start tearing things off, if it looks all shiny and nice and neat like this, okay? So if you start to peel off the paper, and thankfully this didn't happen to me, but I've seen it happen to people online. If you start to tear off the transfer paper and the butcher paper, and you notice that it doesn't quite look right. It doesn't look, you know, flat and smooth and, and all this. Then you can just tape it back on there, put it back in the tumbler press, and heat it for a few seconds more than double check it again. But the, the main thing is to make sure stuff doesn't move if you have to do that, because guess what? It will smear or look like it's a double image or something like that. So you got to got to be real careful if you have to redo it. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy says the tumbler looks great. So, Jay, did that? Probably more than you ever wanted to know about it. Well, no, and it sounds like it's something that, that you know, takes some practice and takes a little skill just to be able to uh, do that. So. It definitely does take practice. And I can see where um, I don't know if you guys could see, but down at the bottom where it's got pet and the paw print that's up above it, I can see where I didn't I didn't apply enough pressure or didn't let it heat long enough, so it's a little faded just right there. Um, huh. well, no, not really. But, cool. but if you're not looking at it real close, you won't notice that. I'm kind of skeptical of my my work sometimes, so. But yep, that is that is my first tumbler that I I did. Um, oh hey David, David's in here. Um, Kathy says she watched Star of Echoes one and two and Hell Night. Yeah. I haven't seen Star of Echoes two. That's but... what I, I talked to her before before the, sh the earlier oh about fifteen minutes ago. And she told me she saw that that uh, story of Echoes too, and I, I didn't even know there was such a thing. <laughs> uh, 
I saw that when I was looking for a picture to use for the thumbnail in the background. I was like, huh, oh, but I guess I missed that, that there was a stir of echo mm. I, uh, I, I cut my hand today and had to have some uh, stitches. <laughs> I thought at first you was really going to say you cut your hand, mm. Jay. Yeah, so. But, but uh, the uh, so cool. Have you got the... Uh, have you got the tattoos on? Yeah, I got the I got the leg tattoos. I'm thinking I'm gonna show my naked legs. Mine might, might as well at least hurt him up a little bit with some whatever these are, whatever they're called. Sleeves. But uh, uh David says, Hey Dana, been a while. Has anyone seen the sequel? Well, I know I haven't, but Kathy says she Kathy's has. seen it, so uh I'm guessing she, it's she not worth it. Um uh, David says he's guessing it's not worth to watch, but I could be swayed considering uh, the goodwill the original has surrounding it. Uh, well, Rob Lowe's on it, so. Um, Sean wants to know, now, is sublimation a better quality than heat, heat press for screen printed shirts? Sean, me personally, I'm not putting down anybody that does screen printing. I think Joe Garcia does uh, T-shirt Joe. I think he does screen printing. Um, and there's no, absolutely nothing wrong with that process. People can make great shirts that way. But for me, this is easier. Um, and probably more economical for me. Because if you... With screen printing, from what I can understand, if you want to make full color shirts, you've got to buy a screen for every color that you're going to use. And I'm like, holy crap, you know, that could come into some money and be labor intensive. Um, so I'm definitely not putting down the quality of screen printed shirts. A lot of them look fantastic. The stuff Joe does is fantastic. Um, just for me, I think sublimation is going to be the better um, process for me. Um, but uh, so me and Jay are going to be getting this started soon here. Well, uh, and for anyone that's interested, it's on Tubi. It's well. on Tubi. I'm going to be watching on Tubi, so I'm going to have to play catch up with the commercials. But uh, oh, uh, Jay, do you, uh, where do you do you have yours queued up? I don't have it queued up yet. So, oh. so on my Blu ray, I have it up to Artisan Entertainment Presents, but I'm not sure if Tubi will have that or not, or it will. Yeah, okay. It doesn't say presents, it just said Artisan Entertainment. Okay, what I'm saying, hang on. <clears throat> Okay. Child humming. <laughs> uh. So anyway, yeah, I'm queued up. So, And also, uh, Night Riders is on Tubi also for tomorrow. So anyone that wants to join in on that. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we'll get started here in a second because we don't want Jay to um, go to like some kind of screensaver mode or something like <laughs> that. So We'll give it another few seconds or so, and then we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. I'm going to make sure I got my subtitles turned on here. Yeah. Okay. Me and Steve were watching uh, Death Proof a little earlier. I didn't watch that. I've got, I've got the old DVD of it. Uh, we watched that. All right, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. If anybody comes in later and needs to catch up, we'll we'll help you get caught up here. So we'll do the countdown. We'll go ahead and get started. So three, two, one, press play. <clears throat> David says he found it on Amazon. Uh, the original still has commercials, though. Yeah, unfortunately, Amazon, unless you want to pay... An extra three bucks or so. I'm, pay, I'm paying it, damn it. <laughs> Me too, Jay. <laughs> but I didn't find it on Amazon. 
I didn't know it was on there, but I, I'd be, I would be watching it that way, so I wouldn't have to deal with the commercials if I knew that. But I thought I searched Amazon and didn't find it. <clears throat> All the kids talking about the Black Power Ranger. <clears throat> no, I really like it. The only thing is, and I'm not going to get or spoil anything, but to me, it's very reminiscent of other movies, you know, like The Shining, Sixth Sense. Yeah. Um, there's this, a lot of it is like, well, I've sort of been there and done that, you know. Um, but I still think it's really well made. I really like it. Um, yeah. And this is based on the novel A Star of Echoes by Richard Matheson. I'd love to go back and read the original story. Richard Matheson was a master when it came to telling these creepy, you know, very dark type of stories. I think a lot of Twilight Zone episodes were based on his stuff. Probably so, yeah. Uh, and we have also Miss Eileena Douglas on this. I love her. Yeah, you know, I, I really like her. Was it uh, Kate Fear? Oh, Robert De Niro rapes her and breaks her, breaks her shoulder. And... I don't, you know, I can't remember if I watched Kate Fear or not. Oh man, you got to see that. Yeah, the, the Steve, real Steve good. loves it. Steve loves Kate Fear. The original is really good too, but the remake of the Scorsese did with Robert De Niro. Right. Uh, that's real good. And yeah, we get the kid talking to the wall. Mm -hmm. We didn't mention that. He was, he was having a conversation with nobody. And, you know, asking what's it like to be dead. You know, asking those typical questions that only a kid would ask. Well, like I say, there's these kind of, you get that sort of sixth sense kind of thing there, you know, and the, the shining, you know. David says, I, I totally thought this took a fair bit from the shining back when I first saw it, but the source material. Yeah, I was going to say that the story probably is way before. Oh, the yeah. So Stephen King probably ripped off this. <laughs> uh, well, Stephen King was always a huge fan of Richard Matheson. Um, he, he said that numerous <laughs> times. Shirley Jackson, Richard Matheson. Uh, Shirley Jackson did the haunting of the Hill House. And, uh, well, you know, at my, my uh, uh, what was it? Uh, sophomore, no, junior. I was in the one act play uh, in my junior year, uh, the lottery. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I played this, I played a kid. I didn't have any lines. I played a kid. I played the son of the girl that gets stoned to death at the end of it. Spo spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, the Shirley Jackson, the lottery. That's a real good story. Yeah. Uh, Stephen King always liked that one too. I heard him mention uh, that. But anyway, we did the, we did the play. Uh, then we got, oh, two or three. We advanced two or three times. W won a few awards with the lottery. <clears throat> and we used crumpled up newspaper that was dyed gray for the rocks. <laughs> um, oh, that's interesting, though. And it was like dipped in gray paint or something like that, hardened up. And so it, we're at the end of it. Yeah, you know, and me and Jay have talked about this before, but they don't even make movies like this anymore. I mean, th this is an excellent little movie. I love it. And this was 1999. Um, 
I wonder when 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 the original the Richard Matheson story was written, probably like in the sixties or something. Um, David says that the source material dates back to the fifties. Of oh, the fifties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I love Aliana Douglas's outfits on here on this movie. And if this movie has a uh, message, don't get hypnotized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't yeah, don't ever let anybody hypnotize you. Although it turns out to be a good thing, in- inevitably, you know. But drive you crazy. Uh, well, I don't want to give too much away, but uh it's it seems like there's another message here that you can't trust all your neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was the line that, that the neighbor says at the end? This is a good neighbor. This is a good neighborhood or it's yeah. a decent neighborhood, you know. Yeah. Well, it is and it isn't. <laughs> you got some bad eggs. Oh, yeah. Uh, Batman says the uh, the novel came out in 1958, so late 50s. Huh. Oh, and you know this guy's a sleaze bag right here. He's looking at that woman's boobs, and he <laughs> and he's a married dude. You know, I I think I'd just knock him upside the head. <laughs> Be done with it. Oh. oh, goodness. Oh. So, yes, um, they're about to have the the hypnotizing scene here. You ever been hypnotized, Dana? No, and after watching this movie, I probably don't <laughs> want to be. I don't think I can relax enough to be hypnotized. David says, man, already hit with commercials. Maybe I should have used Tubi. <laughs> I guess he's thinking maybe there'd be less commercials on Tubi. I haven't got it yet, but... And fortunately, Tubi's commercials, usually they're about a minute. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so they're pretty short usually. <laughs> but Batman says it'll be the same way with Tubi, David. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes find, you, you know, of, of the of the of the different channels that have commercials, I find Tubi has the less less of them usually. Uh, they have them, but it it doesn't occur as often. It doesn't appear to on Tubi. David, I guess he's talking about Amazon. He says three minutes. Three minutes of commercials. Yeah, they got my damn three dollars. I <laughs> they got mine too, Jay. <laughs> I, I, I you know, my, my term for that is consumer sodomy. Yeah, right. that's exactly what it is. Because you're already paying for the Amazon Prime. You're basically you're already paying for the channel. But then they want to chisel you for an extra three bucks to take the commercials away. Uh, don't ask that question. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> uh, Tomorrow, there will be intermittent clouds with a high of 82 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of 69 degrees. I love, though, the way that they... Um, get him to be hypnotized like he's in a movie theater and there's a blank screen and all that. I just think that's really cool. And there's a word on the screen, but it's out of focus. And you have to get closer to it to see the word. We find out and, and and I think Indiana Douglas brings this up later. He's 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 easily hypnotizable. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, he's a he's a special case. He he's 
And I've heard that there are people that are easily hypnotized. It, it's just at the drop of a hat, they can be hypnotized. But some people, nah, you can't, you can't make them. I, I bet Steve, because Steve's such a skeptic, I bet you could never hypnotize him. Well, exactly. I, I don't think I could relax enough to do it. And I'd probably be somebody that would wait, come to and they'd be laughing because I'd be crawling like a rooster or something <laughs> like that. Well, I think in, in talking to Kathy earlier about this uh, uh, movie, she had said the way she got it, this was sort of a, how not a power, but a, ability he already had he just needed the door open you know yeah uh, exactly yeah this, this sort of you know this opens the door so to speak you know to something he already had in him because his son has it you know uh, and just the way this stuff is is filmed he's just getting little snippets you know, and it's just so creepy. And it keeps on even after this initial session. He just keeps seeing more and more. Well, the word is sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh... so they're talking about there's only 8% of the population that's highly hypnotizable. <laughs> And he has this unquenchable thirst whenever. Yeah, exactly. Whenever he has visions or, you know, the connection with the uh, under the afterlife or whatever, he gets thirsty. <clears throat> yeah, Blissful, I did see that where Kevin Bacon is going to the last prom at the high school where Footloose was filmed. I think that's awesome. <laughs> Did you ever see the re? They made a remake of that damn movie. Did you see it? <laughs> I knew it came out, but I refused to watch it, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> there is no other Footloose movie for me other than the Kevin Bacon one. Yeah, I've never seen it either. Oh, thank you, Blissful. Blissful says, Dana, I was away, but I love the Tumblr. Yeah, I'm going to be making me my own personal Tumblr. Here, I guess I'm gonna go with the Evil Dead thing to mine. Well, what, what, well, how much would a Jaws tumbler cost me? A Jaws tumbler? I gotta come up with a price. That's what I was sitting here thinking, Jay. How much am I gonna sell these puppies for? I'm not ordering one yet, but I'm just wondering. You know, kind of give me a you know guesstimation. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I guess figure in the price of the tumbler and then, you know, the, the material and all that stuff. <clears throat> oh. That hurts me watching that safety pin going go into the hand. That's That's a hell of a thing. Be sticking him with a safety pin while he's under. Yeah. I'd be after her for that. You stuck me with the damn. You stuck me with the fucking safety pin. <laughs> and his wife's wanting to get frisky with him. It looks like mm. here. Yeah, I had to skip ahead. Had a commercial. But mm. I think I'm caught up pretty good. She's. Filling him up. Ugh. Well, she's getting excited. <laughs> I think, though, if I'm remembering correctly, he has a reaction of some sort here. Kind of puts a damper on the sexual activity. Yeah, because he's seeing more of the uh, vision.
that watching that fingernail break off too is <laughs> very painful looking. Oh, Liz, well, I had the feeling the remake was terrible, and that's why I refused to watch it. <laughs> Who was in that? Who was in that remake? You know, it's so it it's it's so terrible to even think about it. I think I forgot <laughs> blocked out who was in it. Well, now I'm interested. Uh let's see. <clears throat> oh. All right, let's see. David says uh, Kevin Bacon's going to be in Mike's scene. Oh, okay. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, me too. Uh, Kenny Warmold, who I've never heard of. No, Julianne no. Hull. Andy McDowell was in it. Dennis Quaid was in it. Uh, Uh, yeah. I don't know what somebody is doing. It sounds like they're shooting a gun or shooting off fireworks. I don't know if y'all can hear that. Was well, that the, something they do for Easter? I don't know. I, if they're shooting a gun, that's somebody's going to probably end up calling the cops on them. It's dark yet. I don't know. They do that kind of crap around here all the time. I'm just thinking about the damn, of course, I, I don't want to see it, the damn foot loose, loose, loose remake. But think about Dennis Quaid, and I'm assuming he played John Lithgow's part. That would sound right, yeah. He's having more visions. He's at the He's trying to quench his thirst. Now he's got his, he's about to drink out of the sink. <laughs> oh, and there, there she is. I don't know. I, I might be a little ahead of you or you might be a little ahead of me, but he's. <clears throat> so the TV was like on white noise and the yeah, girl. Yeah, there she, there she then is. Then disappeared. Anyway, it's a ghostly girl. She obviously wants help with something. Kathy says, Jay, just don't go there. I've made it six minutes into the remake. It sucks. I don't know if there's anybody any good in it. Yeah, I'm not going to. Well, I don't. I have no intention of going there. So. <laughs> So the kid knows, his son knows that there's something going on here. That's the thing about kids in these stories. It's just natural for them. There's just like, mm -hmm. it's no big deal that they can talk. They're not them. afraid of it or anything you know, like that. It's no big deal that they're talking to ghosts or whatever, you know. Kid just accepts it. But yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I wouldn't be surprised if Stephen King took a lot of inspiration from this for The Shining. Yeah, I think, you know, those, he read a lot of that stuff, you know, Richard Matheson, Shirley Jackson, people like that. Robert Block, I think, as well, who did, yeah. you know, who wrote Psycho. Um and there's just no way you can read all that stuff when you're growing up and it not seep into whatever you're doing, whether you're doing movies or you're a writer or whatever. It just, there's, there's no way to keep it from seeping into what you're doing. <laughs> I like this. She fucked up my brain. I'm <laughs> Uh, she gonna unfuck. You're me. clicking your clumsy ass feet around my brain. She gonna, she fucked my brain up. She gonna unfuck it. Uh, 
And I guess that's his job is working on the phone lines or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he's calling her from the up on top of the phone pole or the power line or whatever. So she says something that his mind is now like an open door and it's open to receive anything. Well, that's another aspect in this movie, sort of jumping ahead a little bit, that's also an aspect of The Shining, is that there's other people that have the same ability. Uh, right. To, to receive, you know, to receive. The, the... So the kid's talking to, to the ghosts again. And so he's talking about a girl named Samantha that told him who his mom could call to, to have babysit for him. Flashes of red. Mm-hmm. Shows her something up with her. He don't know what it is, but there's something up with her. I'm trying to see what the book she has in her hand. I just wondered if it was would turn out to be a Richard Matheson story or something like that. Maybe she's reading for school. Flash that red. <clears throat> hey, Rue. Oh. So this tells you something, too, about, you know, especially small communities. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing for people to be all into high, high school sports, like football in this case. But when football turns out to be the be-all, end-all of stuff, I think something's wrong there. Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Hey, Chris. Chris says, hi, everybody. Slash the light. Yeah. What is, How what many is, people are in here? There needs to be at least that many lights. Oh, there's seven people in here right now. Uh, uh. Did you ever watch that? I, I really like that show, uh, series, Friday Night Lights. Uh, I've never watched it. You should give it a try. If you can find it streaming somewhere, you might, you know, just try the first few episodes. But I really got into that show. And I'm not even a big football fan, you know. Uh, never have been. I'd watch the Dallas Cowboys because Daddy was such a fan of them. Uh, right. Really watching the Dallas Cowboys. But that show is really good. Funny well, some, sometimes they may have a sports element into them, but the story surrounding it is so good. Yeah, that, that's, well, that's, what, that's what I would say about the series. That it's, it's, you know, I really got into it. And even though I never, you know, I can take her to leave football or particularly high school football, but I really like that show. Chris says, I'm not a football fan, but strangely, I love movies about football. Well, see, I'm not a, a baseball fan either, but 
you know, Field of Dreams and stuff like that. I, I like movies like that because they have more to them than than mm -hmm. just the baseball. Well, yeah, I would suggest you, like I say, give, give a couple of episodes a try and see what you think. But I got into it right away. I used to watch it with Mama. She really liked it, too. <clears throat> And the coaches saying to the uh, team, clear eyes, full hearts. Mm -hmm. I think that was the same. <laughs> so the uh, babysitter is hearing the little boy talking to somebody on the uh, baby monitor. Yeah, we won't say who that somebody is yet. <laughs> But it's revealed here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Now he knows there's something going on. He can sense it. Yeah. He's at a party with his wife. <clears throat> Samantha says it's always dark where she is. But these people are, there's a few of them that seem like assholes. They're just saying, move, move to Kevin Bacon and wanting him to, you know, go in there. Why don't they just go out around him or something? I don't know why they're yelling at him. Well, now the girl's grabbed the kid and she's mm -hmm. running out of the house with him. <clears throat> Um, David's wondering if Kevin Bacon would talk about this film considering his aversion to Friday the 13th. I, I was thinking that there may be an interview uh, with him on this disc, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know why he would have an aversion to this one. I didn't know he wouldn't talk about Friday the 13th. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't think that he really had anything against Friday the 13th, except that I I heard, I didn't hear him say this, but I heard that he didn't, he talked like Friday the 13th wasn't uh, one of the first movies he ever did. He kind of wanted, people seem to think he wanted it left off his resume, I guess. Huh. Um, so to speak, but I mean, he had done Animal House, and um, I can't remember. He did that movie Diner. I'm forgetting oh, yeah. what, what I like that, that yeah, was. I like that one, Diner. <laughs> And that, this babysitter's trying to take off with their kid. Well, she's yeah, keeps yelling, tell me where she is, tell me where she is. Samantha.
So we're finding out more about Samantha that Samantha was evidently this girl's sister. She disappeared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poor David, he says, already on my third commercial block, Jay, I may be joining you in Tubi soon. <laughs> yeah, so far I just had, no, I've had two, but like I say, they're, they're, so far it's just been a minute, almost, I think exactly a minute, so I don't have to jump ahead too far just to catch up. Yeah, damn it, when they had commercials, Amazon was terrible. Mm. Go on yeah. for like three minutes. <clears throat> Pay that three bucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the three bucks will be, be worth it if you watch a lot of stuff on Amazon Prime. And so this is a thing that's in in a lot of movies where kids can see and hear things that the parents can't. They You can't get the kid to tell you why did they do something? Why did they say something? In this case, why, why, did, um, why did he tell his mom that Samantha said to get Debbie to babysit for him? And, he, and his voice changed it. His voice, yeah. That was a that was a surreal kind of creepy moment too. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Batman. I I I get that. He says I think some actors and actresses are embarrassed by the first movie they're in, like Jennifer Aniston with the Leprechaun. Yeah, I think a lot of times as they, if it's an actor or actress that becomes famous later, but they weren't famous when they, like Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, for a long time, I think it, it, it might have been a little bit them, but I think it was more their agents didn't want like that getting out that hey they were in this low budget you know schlock fest movie. Yeah. And I, now could see, I could see Matthew McConaughey just having a sense of humor about it and just freely admitting it you know yeah, yeah I think it was more along the lines that in his case I think it was his agent more than anything else <clears throat> So now the kid uh, is in bed with mommy and daddy's on the couch because he, you know, can't sleep. Oh. By this point, I would think I would be scared to be anywhere by myself because I didn't <laughs> think that girl was going to show up again. Don't we get a little bit of Night of the Living Dead in this movie? Maybe, Jay. Is that what it is? Because at, at one point, the kid's watching, uh, oh, it's I forget what it is. It's a mummy movie. But then I think, don't it transition to Night of the Living Dead at one point? It, yeah, that seems... That seems very. I can be wrong about that, but it, uh, these people drink too much beer. Every time you look, <laughs> they're the, you know, I'm not being a prude or anything, but good lord, every time you turn around, they're drinking beer.
So he's starting to ask questions about Samantha, the other people in the community. We're going to find out that uh, these uh, football players ain't exactly... Uh, not being completely on the level here. Yeah, and they're not real good guys either. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you can kind of, the way he says it, you can kind of get a sense that he ain't telling the truth. Yeah, I think I might have heard of her, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I can tell you're lying. Yeah, I can you take know. one look at that kid and know he's lying. You know more than you say you, you do. Uh. I wonder if she done anything recently, Indiana Douglas. You know, I don't think so, but I could be wrong. If anybody in the chat knows, um, but on Tubi, there's a, and it's a documentary. I think about cult movies. There's a couple. Of, it's three parts, I believe. Uh huh. And if I'm remembering right, one of at one point, it's Joe Dante, and it's a Indiana. Is that her name? Eliana I say Aliana, but uh, you know it could be either. But or. it's her, Joe Dante. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, John Waters, and I think there was one more, and I can't remember what the last one was. Um, but it's real, real interesting. I need to ch uh, check that out. You know, John Joe Dante's got a YouTube channel called uh, Oh, what's it called? Something Trailers. Uh, oh, what's it? Is it is it that trailers from hell? Trailers from hell. That's it. Trailers from hell. Yeah, and it's a good. It's got some really good stuff. But, you know, Joe Dante heads it up, but it's got other people in it doing talking about you know the movies and trailers and stuff. <clears throat> so he's asking this other kid if if he knows. Samantha. See, I don't think the R word would. R word, it. yeah. You know, I'm playing it safe here, but well, that what word. Say, what do you say now? Uh, 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 special? Uh, uh, I don't know if if mentally men disabled, mentally, mentally is, challenged, mentally challenged, mentally disabled. I don't know if that's safe to say. Because <laughs> uh, I'll say it. When I grew up, the word was retarded. You know. Yeah, uh, and it, it wasn't offensive. It was just that's just the word. That's for, actually, you know, you know, the shortened version of it sounds a lot worse than yeah. the, the full version of it. But, but that's the medical term for it. Yeah, yeah. Now, true enough, sometimes you used it as an insult. You retard, you know. Uh, yeah, exactly. And usually, just the the bus balls or kid somebody. Oh, you retard, you know. Uh, and then in this political correct, completely correct, uh, correct age, you can't say that. You can't say midget anymore. <laughs> Evidently, according to TJ, you can't say gypsy. Yeah. Gypsy, well, that's all okay. You can't say gypsy. Well, what, what are they then if they're not gypsy? Uh, 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 Kathy says mentally challenged is okay. Well, it's just more words you have to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you got to add more words to it, you know. Uh, it, uh, so that was a weird thing for him to say they're going to kill you you and Maggie both mm -hmm. yeah he's he's always acted odd you know even early on he's acted mm -hmm. oh it's a decent neighborhood that's what he yeah. keeps this is a decent neighborhood <laughs> Kathy says gypsy is now travelers. So really we're supposed to, I'm not saying anything against Kathy. It's just like stuff has gotten just so crazy. Well, I don't even see what's offensive about the word gypsy. I don't see how that's even offensive. I don't know. Blissful said that, you know, well, somebody better uh 
better tell Stevie Nicks that, you know, you can't. <laughs> I don't know. I, travelers, huh? That seems uh, sort of non-specific. <laughs> Anyone can be a traveler. You know. Oh, this this scene here it creeps me out every time I see it. You know, the kid, kid takes out the gun. I remember that scene being really shocking the first time I watched it. So I was like, what in the hell? Yeah. Well, again, I think he says at one point, you know, is this real or am I dreaming? You know? He, yeah. He gets to the point where he's not even sure if it's real or a dream. And I think that's what makes this movie, part of what makes it so good is you're off kilter the whole entire movie. You're not even sure. Is he dreaming? Is he awake? You know, what? what's going on here? And what was the deal with his shoe under the bed? He seemed really freaked out about that. Now, what, what, what was that all about? Um, I don't... I think the... I think the kid's dad knows more than... I think he knows more than he's ever let on. Oh, well, we know that. But yeah. I mean, but he, at one point he, he finds his shoe under the bed and he's got, oh God, or something, you know, and I was like, well, I didn't quite get that. I, I think, you know, he's, he's, it's like he's going through the process that he went in the dream that he had before, like the same stuff. He saw the note from his wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, yeah. So once again, not quite sure. Well, am I, am I awake or am I? <laughs> right. I had a dream. And he saw the 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 uh mail carrier and and the kid Adam, he's locked himself in the house. Mm -hmm. He knows he's got a gun from the dream, so right. breaking the window and getting in there. And of course it's you know, it's too late. Yeah, am I awake or asleep? <laughs> oh, now I got a commercial. And of course, the mother is, you know, oh my God, my baby, my baby. <clears throat> David said, is this movie a classic? I'm pretty tough when it comes to rating films. We give this a solid B, but everyone seems to enjoy it. I don't know if I would call it a classic, David, um, but it's one that I like to go back to every once in a while. I I'd, always, I'd, give, it a, I'd give it a B plus, or if I'm going to give it the, uh, the dead out scale, I'd give it a four. For yeah, I think that's probably where I'd have it, have it at too. Oh, so pull it up. <laughs> you want me to bring up the uh, deadite scale, Jay? Yeah. Bring it up. That that's our score. Was it your score too? That's, yep. We'll yeah, I think that's where I where I'd have it at. Yeah. So me and it's, Jay give it four deadites out yeah. of five here. It's a solid move. It's a yeah, it's, solid. That, well, like I say, it's very reminiscent of other stuff, like The Shining, Sixth Sense. But right. as has been stated before, this came first as far as the story. It came first before either one of those. Um, so and the kid is at this military funeral, mm -hmm. and this is a this is a Shining esque. Uh, moment here yeah when he gives the kid the look there mm -hmm. uh kathy says she liked jacob's ladder a little better and i'm glad you brought up 
uh, Jacob's Ladder. Cabin. I really like, yeah, I really like Jacob's Ladder, and, and Tim Robbins is great in that. Oh, he's fantastic. Uh, but no, I really like J Jacob's Ladder. I saw that in the theater, Jacob's Ladder. I didn't get to see it in the theater, but I, I probably rented it or something, or saw it on satellite, maybe. Yeah. Everybody seems to love Jacob's Ladder, it seems That'd like. That'd make a good watch along, Jacob's Ladder. I'm going to have to put that on there, actually. Um. <clears throat> now, this comes off as creepy because he, he's following them through the yeah. uh, cemetery. <laughs> the, uh, TJ's in there. He says, Dana needs to recalibrate her scale. And then he says, kidding. What I mean? What would you give this, TJ? Oh, come on! It's a solid four. It's a four. It's a, a B plus. I take it that TJ doesn't like it as well as some of the rest of us. Boy's got the eyes on him, doesn't he? Is what, what this guy says. The X ray. Which is very reminiscent of you got the shine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, TJ. He said the movies you give fours are iffy sometimes. Have you been listening to CK and Uncle Bill? Uh, I think you have. Go and watch the Shining miniseries. A lot, I think a lot of people are saying, "Oh no, that's terrible." Mm -hmm. You haven't seen it in a long time, and you you need to go and watch it again. And you may still hate it, you know. Uh, yeah, we're but, not going to guarantee that you'll but, have an epiphany about but, that. But I did. I had an epiphany uh, that shit. This is good. This is. I had an epiphany that I didn't hate that kid. Like I didn't I hate the kid. Did. Yeah, the kid's good, uh, but. For me, I'm currently reading, I'm nearly finished with the book. I'm reading the book. Mm -hmm. And for me, the epiphany came from having the book in my mind while watching the miniseries and, and saying right. how, yeah. how, how good an adaptation I thought it was from the actual book, you know. And I think a lot of people out there are comparing the miniseries to the Kubrick movie. Uh, yeah, and I think that's, you know, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I think that's a mistake right there. Because uh, I love that's the That's like apples and oranges. Yeah, exactly. It's, it really is apples and oranges. And I love the Kubrick movie, but it is one of the worst adaptations of a book there is. It just, um, and it's a great movie on its own, but if you want a accurate uh, 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 representation of the book, I think the miniseries is what does it. You know? um, um, TJ says, didn't you give Last Slumber Party a four? Now, okay. <laughs> TJ, I have different, I probably did give it a four. But m my four is variable, okay? I'm not trying to take up for myself or explain things away. I'm just saying sometimes a movie can be bad. And I will still give it a four. Here's why. Because I find it entertaining. You're, you're giving the score based on your own personal enjoyment of the film. Exactly, uh, Jay. Exactly. Now, having said that, what is your uh, dead out score for Terror on Tour? I probably have to give it a good solid four. Or possibly a five, just because of how entertaining that movie is to me. Well, like I say, yeah, it's for you. It's it's an entertaining film. Is it know. Citizen Kane? Hell no, it's not Citizen Kane. <laughs> well, no, certainly not that. But, uh, um, it's not a classic. It's not anything like that. But I give things fours and fives sometimes for different reasons other than how well made of a movie it is. Well, I would give it a three, Terrell. Mm -hmm. I would give it a few uh, from my memory of it. it, it and like I said, yeah. And yeah, if we had the CK or Uncle Bill in here, they'd be committing Harry Carey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you tell him that we got a four. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Chris says this movie here that we're watching, Star of Echoes, it's easily a three out of five for him, which I, th I think that's solid too. Three out of five. Now we're getting a man from the cemetery, the uh, soldier, he's at her house and he's, he, she wants to see Kevin Bacon. He wants to see Kevin Bacon. Yeah, right? and he's upset with her that Kevin Bacon didn't yeah. come to see him. Yeah. And But she, you know, but, you know, she keeps, well, you tell me what you know, but he won't do it, you know. Uh, but then he's finally going to relent and give in. You know? Oh, that's right. She's at his house. That's right. Okay. Mm, or or right. wherever they're having the this. Or wherever that is. It's it's all spray painted with graffiti. Uh, and and the, the fact, too, that, and I'm not sure if it in Richard Matheson's original story, if this character was African American, but there's a shining connection too because Dick Halloran was African American. I don't know if well, any Arthur, and of course it's, it's right out of the shining what he's saying to her. Some people yeah, exactly. have it, some people have it strongly, some people, you know, don't have it real strong, some people have it really strongly, you know. The, the visions or whatever the connection. Uh, uh, like I say, yeah, Stephen King got got inspiration. He <laughs> was definitely inspired by Richard Matheson's uh, source. Definitely material. can see a strong, a strong inspiration. Uh, so here's a movie here um, that the kids watch and it. Uh, and I believe that is a, it looks like a mummy movie. It's a mummy. But and and uh, but she puts the kibosh on that because um, mm -hmm. he has nightmares. <sighs> but something tells me in Richard Matheson's story they didn't say fuck. Yeah. Um, she just said fuck there, and I'd actually like to read the story and just see what. Mm -hmm. Me too. And the kid's saying five more minutes, and she's like, no, no, zero minutes. And so she switches it, but I think does does it switch back to the mummy movie? Yeah, or well, it does switch back to the mummy movie, and then it switches to another movie. And, and I and you tell me if it's what I'm thinking it is. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, is, I don't want to say cliche, but when she closed the medicine cabinet mirror and the girl was behind her that has yeah. been used a lot it's just i figured she would see her but she don't seem to see her mm -hmm. and he's and going to his cd he's, collection because <laughs> that's what we saw earlier is is kevin bacon's playing around on his guitar yeah and his son goes over and puts his hands on the strings to pluck a certain note he says that's that's it daddy or that's the you know that's the way to play it you know yeah and now he's got this tune ringing in his head he don't know where it's coming from and the water she went to get in the bathtub and we see samantha running her fingers in the bath water and the she gets freezing. in and it's freezing so now he's seeing samantha on the television screen yeah that's nigh the living dead yeah, yeah that's and, definitely uh, nigh the living uh, dead. H hr puffing stuff is that what that is i think that yeah and that's creepy in and <laughs> i think i used to love that show growing up yeah but yeah nigh the living dead so Oh. It's like it's like well the mummy isn't creepy enough. Here's you something really creepy. <laughs> oh. And also that's public domain, so they could oh, yeah, yeah. get away with you. Uh, and he's not paying attention to his wife. She wants him to go check the pilot light on the heater. She thinks it's went out. He's looking for the tune. I've done that before, though. I've had music or a tune go through my head that I couldn't put a source to. And exactly. Crazy. So she's going down in the basement, and of course, that, <laughs> Samantha's mm. down there now. And it keeps switching back to Night the Living Dead, and he's like, I said no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to HR puffing stuff and then 
and she goes to light it and it's already lit. And two, I was thinking this movie was longer, but it's only, you know, an hour and 39 minutes. Yeah. So it's not long. A little over 90 minutes. Um, Batman, is there a brand new Omen movie? Because if there is, I haven't seen it. Uh, the, the first Omen, I think it's called. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet, so I couldn't comment on I saw it. the trailer and have zero interest in it. <laughs> So, Jay won't be seeing it either. Well, so we, when well, it's streaming, maybe I'll watch it. Hell, if they show the Barbie movie on, on a streaming channel, I watch it for free, I'll watch it. You know? in but fact, you ain't going to go pay to watch that. After all this Barbenheimer bullshit, I kind of want to see Barbie now, you know. <laughs> I actually kind of want to see that damn movie now. And I really want to see Oppenheimer. Oh, yeah. I love movies like that. I'm wanting, it, I'm wanting to see that Immaculate movie after uh, hearing so many people yeah, talk yeah, about too. Blissful also says, off topic, I'm waiting for dandelions to come out. I want to make a small batch of jelly. Well, you know, I got some more scones in there. I've still got some left. I've still got some clotted cream. Oh, and hush, Dana. <laughs> Clotted cream. And That's the first time I've ever ate clotted cream and the first time I ever made it, of course. Well, now, is it, is it sweet? Um, well, it's made with whipping cream. So it has a slight uh, sweet taste, but not a real strong one. It's almost like a really sweet butter. Huh to me is what you know if, if you could imagine a little bit of sugar mixed in in yeah. butter i mean there's sweet butter yeah uh, but this seems to have a little bit more of a a sweet taste and it's it's just so good on these oh, uh, <laughs> it sounds good but we see he's had a connection with samantha mm. uh, you know, it's cold and breath is, you can see his breath is cold in the room. And, uh, they nearly touched, or did they touch? I think they did. So now he's going back and he wants, wants her to hypnotize him again. And she's with her friend now, and they just smoked a big fat joint. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering, too, if this is insinuating that Aliana Douglas's character like, is like gay, lesbian. Like lesbian thing. Yeah. I did that, too, yeah, if that was her gay friend. Uh, I think it's kind of hinting at that. Mm. That was probably something else that probably wasn't strongly insinuated <laughs> in Richard Matheson's source material, but you got to slow down. I just we just smoked a fat one. <laughs> <laughs> Big fatty. Yeah. yeah, he says whatever door you open in my brain, I want you to shut it. And she's sitting here looking like I'm dealing with a crazy person here. That's <laughs> the look on her face. Kathy says, yes, it was her gay friend. <clears throat> and Batman says he said he believes that the uh, that new Omen movie is a prequel to the original Omen. Yeah, like I say, it's called, I think it's called First Omen. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Kathy says candles, fatties, and ready for romance. <laughs> It never did that for me. It just made me feel kind of paranoid. 
see, that's how I felt with the gummies. You know, I've never, I've never smoked a joint. You know, all I did was the, the vaping uh, of the Delta Eight, but. The gummies just made me feel too weird and ma yeah. and made me feel kind of paranoid. I thought I was going to go into a panic attack because I didn't know how long it was going to, you know, the effects was going to last. So he's seeing more of those visions and he's also, the word on the screen was dig. Dig, yeah. And he, he starts digging. <laughs> but first he's got to quench that thirst. What's he slamming a beer there? Is it? Yeah. What's she have to do? You want a beer? <laughs> well, he wants a beer. Obviously, he wants a beer. <laughs> These houses here remind me of some of the really old houses in Louisville. And now we got a Burger King commercial. <laughs> we had a Burger King, but they closed it down there. Uh, <clears throat> ooh, a fax machine. Okay, let's see here. All right. Uh, and That's Tanner, what I want to do. I want to come in the house and say, wow, I'm not cleaning that up. If there's uh, Kathy, there. they're tearing our house down. They've got the wall, the side, pretty much well, half the side wall tore down already. Wow. And they were loading stuff in a, in the, a trailer today. And I went and talked to the guy that was helping tear it down he's a real nice guy told him about how well that's my childhood home and he let me walk around i showed him different rooms and what you know he said oh i know i knew your daddy he had that store you know up the road there i said yeah that's where i live but it, he said i was born in 75 so i said oh well <laughs> that's when we moved up here uh but anyway yeah the this the rich people down the road they bought that land and they're tearing, tearing our old childhood home down, Kathy. So. Wow. Oh, well. We got some good pictures of it. I they got evidently some. don't have any sense of nostalgia, do they? But old Tommy Wright, my next door neighbor, says that woman is worth like $30 million. That built a, basically, it's a mansion they built down there. It's my, my, the neighbors were the, the Holloways mm -hmm. and built this big, huge two-story house there. I forget where she gets her money, but anyway, they apparently bought that land that our home was on, and it's being torn down. So, um, Kathy says, "Well, I'll save it for TMI three, but I have some memorable times after a few joints." <laughs> <laughs> well, what, me, you, and Jay, and whoever wants, else wants to come on here with us, we we need to get together and discuss some times when we could do a TMI three. I may have a <laughs> few minutes left. I yeah, I don't know what else I've got left, but I could think of something probably. But if, if, if other people start telling their stories, that would probably lead in us. Make me think of something. <laughs> TJ uh, says he hasn't seen the new Omen movie, but he says the Omen prequel looks exactly like the original Omen. Why bother? <laughs> Good point. <clears throat> But anyway, not only, not only is Kevin Bacon digging, but he's got his son digging. Too. Yeah, his son's out there <laughs> digging in the yard, too. <laughs> this poor child, though, always looks like he's about ready to start crying. <laughs> Even when his parents aren't arguing and stuff, he looks like that. Oh, oh and I, I forgot to mention the refrigerator is full of orange juice. When she got home, she opened yeah, up. The he, he, chug, he chugs that orange juice. What's the shirt? Wild West. Mm. <clears throat> He's saying this is the most important thing that's ever happened to me in my whole stupid life. He goes, "Well, if you know, if your life is stupid, then you know, 
I'm part of that yeah. class too. And then she says, not once have in eight years have you ever talked to me like this. Yeah, and then she says, you're saying our stupid life. Yeah. There's a word again that probably Richard Matheson did not use in his story. <laughs> so he's got to go get him some orange juice. I could drink some right now. I don't have any, but I... Uh, it's water. Well, I've got my typical uh, Saturday evening uh, drink, which is an energy drink, which I probably really don't need, but... I ordered, I ordered me another 40-pack of double-caffeinated coffee. Mm. So might come tomorrow. And then he asked her if she's going to drink cars, and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> Slams it down. You gonna drink that? And then he finally says he's sorry. Look how long it takes. No offense, Jay, but look how long it takes these men to say I'm sorry. That's something that men uh, seem to have a trouble saying. Mm -hmm. I respect you, Jay, for being able to admit that. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I love you. Yeah. Uh, not saying they never say it, but it just seems to be something that's... Uh, but you know, that was not the I'm sorry part, but the I love you part was something that I think Steve said it to me before I said it to him. And that's usually not the way it goes. Um, so, I... Uh, commending for that <laughs> tj says men are only wrong three percent of the time <laughs> where'd you get that percentage <laughs> probably out of his head <laughs> i'm just teasing tj and growing up we had weird sayings for different things but a kiss was sweet sugar give me some sugar and that mm -hmm. was a kiss Just like uh, Ash from the from Army of Darkness when he uh, give me some sugar, baby. That was yeah, sugar. Uh, that's what we that's what we said growing up. That that was a, that was a kiss, getting some sugar. And then you say sweet sugar after that was a kiss. Oh, sweet sugar. So they just apologize, and then uh, she, her grandmother has just passed away, and. He says, do you want me to come with you? And she gets uh, all mad I do. I do. Well, what does she say? She says something about her grandmother, you know, and and he, he said, she says something to him about her grandmother and he goes, no, no, she's meaning she's dead. Because mm -hmm. he knew she was dead before she knew it. Right. Uh, David says, somehow I got a bit ahead of you guys, but I forgot how heartbreaking the ending kind of is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, David. that poor kid. You know he's going to go crazy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kathy says, for the record, I never said give me some sweet sugar to Jay. <laughs> I think you might have said it a few times, Kathy. You might have said give me some sugar. You might have said that. And sometimes it wasn't necessarily a kiss on the lips. Sometimes it's a kiss on the cheek or something. Right, yeah. But you still give it, give it some sugar. No, I, I, I protest that, Kathy. I think you might have said that a few times. <laughs> <clears throat> so, he says, $800 a month, I can't get any <laughs> water. Fuck it. And he just kicks <laughs> that bucket. That's what I'd say, too. So, I th didn't he start digging in the cellar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we don't want to spoil anything, but mm -hmm. there's a, a good reason why he's 
in the they start digging in the cellar. Yep. <sighs> and it's not in the in the ground where he finds the the thing, but it's pretty close. But he finds the water has been turned on, just like the the uh, pilot light was turned on. Mm -hmm. Kathy says, "Hell no, Jay." I guess, I guess she doesn't recall ever. Oh, come on, Candy. We we gave each other sugar growing up. Surely, when I was a little cute little boy, yeah, running around, you gave you gave little Jay some sugar. Come on, cute little Jay tw waddling around. <laughs> Actually, you can see a cute little picture of Jay on the midday with Dana and yeah. Jay uh, intro. Yeah. You gave him some sugar. I know you did. <laughs> yeah, you probably got some back from him. <clears throat> yeah, he's hammering into the floor. He's making me tired with all this <laughs> digging and stuff. Can you imagine when they film something like this, how many takes they have to do and how, how long it takes to film something? You know, it just takes... How long he had to do that? He must have been really exhausted. <laughs> I mean, Kevin Bacon's always been a pretty slim guy, but I'm just wondering, you know, sometimes for these roles, they, you know, may lose weight on purpose, you know, so he's supposed to not be sleeping well, probably not eating well. Uh, so I'm just wondering if he lost some weight for this. Well, when you see him without a shirt, he's looking pretty thin, you know, and in good shape, but thin. And uh, but you know, the biggest example of that is Robert De Niro. You know, he gained a lot of weight for roles or lose weight, you know, like for Kate Fear, you know, mm -hmm. um, which you didn't see. You need to see that. <laughs> Um, yeah, and Steve's probably got it around here because he, he likes that movie really yeah. well. It's Martin Scorsese directed it. Um, Kathy says, I love you, Jay, but never said that. I may have kissed you on the cheek. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking when I was a little bitty, you know, little kid running around, I'm sure. Come on, you gave Jay some sugar. Give me some sugar, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh. I don't know. It's getting chilly back here again. I think I'm going to have to turn on the good old heater back here. Man, it's not in here. Alexa, what is the temperature in my living room? The living room temperature is 77.9 degrees. 77 degrees in here. Nah, that's not heater temperature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he, she's saying no more digging, and uh, he said, no, nah, it's back to normal. Like hell, it's back to normal in there. You know, this, this scene right here where she's not there, and he's at, you know, he's at home by himself, it sort of has a pet cemetery vibe to it. Yeah. Where he's doing stuff that he really shouldn't be doing in her eyes, but he's doing it because she's not there. <clears throat> oh. I remember when we, I mean, speaking of Pet Cemetery, you know, we, we interviewed Miko Hughes, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's on that dead, on the Dead Pit channel. Our interview with Miko Hughes, or Ray's interview with Miko Hughes. I ran the camera. But anyway, I remember after that, I said, uh, what, what was it just you, or did the director tell you, that, I want to play with you? <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> he said, that's just the way I said it. He said, yeah. He said, he said, yeah, I, I've heard no end of joking about that. You know, that's the way I say it. We'll play with you. <laughs> but I think it's, it's creepy though. Cause he says, you know, first I played with mommy. <laughs> And, you know, he talks about playing with Judd, and then he says, yeah. now I want to play with you. It was the way he says, yee, I'm playing with yee. <laughs> but he said, no, nah, it's just the way I said it, just as a kid, you know. Like Y-E-W, you know. Yeah. Yee. So he accidentally hit the wall, and there's some well, loose, find something. loose uh, you know, bricks in there. Going to be a big reveal here. Mm -hmm. uh, and she had told him on the phone, "Well, I'm coming to pick you up. I'll, I'll honk. I'll honk the horn." And that's yeah, that's an important thing to remember. That's pretty gruesome. And like somebody went to a whole hell of a lot of trouble to hide a crime, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. So when he touches the corpse, it goes into stuff that happened in the past. So we're seeing Samantha. I like that, TJ. TJ says, drink idea for this movie, a shake and not stir of Echo's cocktail. There you go. Oh, there you go, yeah. So, this, you know what else this this particular scene reminds me of is when Frank Dodd in the dead zone is trying to get that girl to come in the up on the gazebo. Yeah, yeah. Um it, it you know, I'm just seeing more and more things as I as I watch this. And I think the one guy that's talking to Samantha there, he's more to blame than the other boy. Drink, motherfucker. And of course, this girl obviously doesn't know any better. Um, and they're completely taking advantage of that. Well, particularly when she says, you can kiss me if you want to. Mm -hmm. Then she wants to go home because she realizes that this is, you know, it, it's getting out of control.
So this is where the song comes into play. I mean, I know they're panicking, but geez Louise, you know. Then, of course, they're playing the uh, blame game here. You know, why'd you do that? Well, you told him to put something over her face. So he grabbed the closest thing and put that plastic over her face. The guy that says, I'm not here. <laughs> So we find out that that Adam's still hanging on, the boy that shot himself, but he might make it, he might not. Do you think his father knew what happened already? I think I think he did. I kind of get the feeling too he did. And I, I I would go even further that perhaps the father helped him cover it up. Maybe he helped him wall her in and and do all that. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I say I'd like to actually read the story. So I think he's letting him know, yeah. He said, what were we supposed to do? It was an accident. The kids came to to us. I think even the wife might, his wife might have even known about it, this guy's wife. And so he's willing to, to protect this secret. He's willing to kill Kevin Bacon's character. Yeah, he definitely knew about it. He says he's been living with it for six months. <clears throat> six fucking months. Mm -hmm.
It's scary to think how far people would go to cover up something like that. Yeah, right, Batman. I accident my ass. That's yeah. <laughs> that's what I would say too. Did you see that model car there on the table? Looks strangely like Christine, Jay. Uh. There it is again. Not red, but that's how they were coming out the lot. They were white. I think that one might be red and white. It's not. Oh, I didn't see red. that. Mm. Oh, okay. Now I see. Yeah. Plymouth Fury. <clears throat> I mean, I understand wanting to protect your kids, but they're, they're just about ready to commit another murder to just keep covering this stuff up. Well, he's going to stop that. Like I say, he's been living with this secret for six months. And Now that now his wife is there and has honked the horn. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm ahead of you or not, but anyway, that's where I'm at. Uh, she's getting ready to come up to the house. Here. Yeah, yeah. Well, she, she, of course, we couldn't hear it, but she honked the horn. Mm -hmm. And the lights are going off in the house. and She hears racket going on in the house. and She's going to go and get something out of her purse. <clears throat> it's a big old knife. One thing I would not like to do is come into a completely dark house after I heard a bunch of commotion in there. She tried to turn the light on, but there's a light. <clears throat> Uh-oh. See, and not only are they willing to kill him to bury this secret, but they're going to kill her, too. <clears throat> and then, of course... And that's there's the feathers that the boy yeah. had talked about. He was scared of the feathers. She didn't understand what that meant, you know, but he wouldn't go there because he was afraid of the feathers. Mm -hmm. 
So he's repeating that line from earlier in the, the dream. They were going to kill you, Tommy, you and Maggie both. So that's coming back. This is a decent neighborhood again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're seeing Samantha again. And she's putting her glasses back on. Coat. Coat. So it, it's cold in the afterlife? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's almost like she's going back to the time before the bad thing happened. Yeah, it might have been. <clears throat> now she gets a proper burial, Samantha. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I like that song. I don't know who sings that song, but I like that song. Um, now, I'm not sure if this is the... No, I guess this is a different one. So they're leaving that house. I don't blame them. I would leave that house too. And this poor kid. Yeah. Uh, he's hearing voices, just thousands of voices in his head, you know, from the passing the house and she hears all these voices. And I'm like, was well, this, this, this kid, the rest of his life, he's going to hear these damn voices. Uh, you know, there's your sequel right there. <laughs> Yeah. He's holding his ears, but that ain't going to do any good. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's it's kind of a sad ending, you know, with that kid, you know. It's, yeah. You know, his voice is in his head. It's like, they said that, that'll never, I guess that'll never stop, you know. Just. <laughs> <laughs> David says that was a long U-Haul shot. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely was. Uh, uh. But I, you know, even without having the sound on and, and things like that, I still enjoyed watching it again. Um, like I said, this is a movie that I like to come back to quite often. Um, because I don't know, it, the, the subject matter is very dark, but it's a, it's a comfort movie for me, um, in a way. Well, like you say, it's the kind of movie you don't see much anymore, you know. Mm -mm. They just don't make these kind of, kind of movies anymore, and it, I mean, I understand that times have changed, the landscape has changed um, upon which they make movies, but these are the type of movies that seem to work for me. Yes, yeah, Session 9, that's another very good, creepy movie, David. Um, Dave, I, you know, I, I know I've seen that, but I can't remember uh, specifics of that. But I know that, that rings a bell. I know I've seen that. I was waiting for the songs to come up. Maybe we could figure out what that, who sings that song. Yeah, I turned it off here, so you let me know what the what the song is. Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, but we can talk about other stuff while I'm waiting for get these that to come up. Legs here. <laughs> Are uh, they starting to bother you now, Jay? Uh, 
Oh. Um, Batman says, are you talking about It's Not the Spotlight by Beth Orton, Jay? I know they well, were talking be. about It's the it. final song. It's the final song you know, that, that she's singing, you know, the, whoever that is. Um, it's the final song in the movie. And it might be that sounds familiar, Spotlight. So it might that might be it. There's a lot of um, a lot of credits. Yeah. David says, "What lies beneath" came out around the same time too. I remember that one being okay. I loved "What Lies Beneath" as well. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I like that. Um. White noise. Um, that was another with Michael Keaton. That was another great one too. I actually want to go back and watch White Noise again. Mm. Mothman Prophecy, Sean. Yeah, Mothman Prophecies was great. Kathy says she enjoyed what lies beneath. Okay, so. We're getting into the songs here. Let's... Ooh. There was a song called Meat Mania by Super Skank. Oh. <laughs> a Paint It Black was not sung, uh, sung by the Rolling Stones in here. It's performed by Daub. It's oh. not the spotlight performed by Beth Orton. Beth Orton, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Batman says, I don't care what anyone else says. I love Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. I, I mean, that is okay if people like Blair Witch 2. I know Steve liked it real well. I think he liked the goth chick in it. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen it, honestly. I don't know if I've ever seen it. Uh, but if I really want to go back to what I feel is the better film, I would watch the original. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, please, please give this stream a thumbs up. How many? How many people we got in here now? We got how many, eleven. How many thumbs up should we be having? We should have at least eleven, maybe twelve, because I think there were twelve in here a little bit earlier. I think some people like, like uh, CK tells me, he says the later you start these things, people are more able to come in, but. I, I'm like Jay, though. Like, when, I can't start these things at 10 o'clock Eastern time. No, I, just I mean, you finish uh, the stream with them, and I, I I have to go to right to bed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I would like to be able to do it, but I, you know, CK and Uncle Bill both work. They both work full-time jobs. I just don't know how they can do those you know, maybe I'm just an old fogey. I don't know, but I don't know how they can do streams that they start at 10 p.m. Eastern time and then get up and go to work the next day. I mean, I know Uncle Bill works from home like I do, but still, you still got to get up and you still got to drag yourself to your desk or what, wherever you're working. And, um yeah, the song Haunted by Poe, the very ending song over the credits, I'm guessing. Um, that one's good, too. Uh, David says it's much easier for him to catch a late-night stream, uh, which, you know, I'm not sure how old you are, David, and I'm not going to ask you, but uh, a lot of younger people can do that they can pull all nighters and then keep going the next day but i'm past this yeah I'm way, be, I'm way past that but i you know, never could do it to be honest <laughs> I'll, I'll you know when i go to bed at night and I'm, I'm because i pull out my i pull out my 10 inch candle um and i can't i can't get i can't even get pouring on any of them now in texas so <laughs> But anyway, I'll, I'll pull up stuff from, you know, that, that uh, CK or Unc and Uncle Bill are doing, you know, late at night. And I'll watch, maybe watch about, you know, 30 minutes or, or, or Yeah, so that's or what I more, do. Or I go to bed, you know. Uh, in particular, they're doing something late at night. And, it's like, and they would probably tell me, shame on you, Dana. You don't want like, 
good lord i'm I'm just about to doze off and they're just starting you know <laughs> uh, and i'm like good lord um, um patman says and some people have to go to work at mccall later yeah i'm more. glad batman i have great respect for you working at you know in public service or customer service at a restaurant because you guys literally have to work hellish hours i would not want to do it i would not and i probably could not so i have great respect for anybody that works in the restaurant industry um sean says less than six hours of sleep and the next day is miserable for for me you and my husband both sean uh, i mean i can get by I can get by with, sometimes I do better if I get less than eight hours sleep, believe it or not. But then I think I need that extra sleep for, for some odd reason. Um, Kathy says, hope everyone has a nice Easter. I'm having a Mexican food feast. That's interesting. It sounds delicious too. Uh, what is everyone's menu? Well, I can say for me and Steve, we're going to my mom and dad's tomorrow. And mom is going to have ham. And, you know, we're going to have lots of desserts and stuff like that. And mom will have, I'm sure she'll have all the fixings to go with the ham. So, you know, all your, she might have macaroni and cheese and green beans and stuff like that. No, hush. <laughs> Mine's going to be something thrown in the air fryer, I'm sure. <clears throat> well, you know, if you get to feel lonely, Jay, you know you can message me, and if oh, I oh yeah yeah, I, you, can, you, sure can tell me, you can uh, tell me you can uh, tell me about the good food you're eating and describe it. <laughs> I'll know. torture poor Jay. Describe it in detail, you know. Maybe maybe take a few pictures and send it to him. You know, of the cakes and pies or whatever. You won't be mad at me if I do that, Jay. Yeah, I would be mad at you. Yeah. But, uh, I, but, but I still, I, I you know, I, I like to look at pretty pictures. So. <laughs> Blizzle says she's having ham, mashed potatoes, cabbage salad, and a broccoli bake for dessert, chocolate yeah. cherry brownings. Oh, they don't like quit it. <laughs> uh. It does sound delicious. I'm with Kathy on that one. Um, mm -hmm. uh, TJ says he can still do it by stay, staying up late like that, but it catches up eventually. Yeah, sometimes I can do it for a few days, even if I am working. But eventually it does catch up with me. And then I'm like, oh, God, Dana, why did you do that? Why did you do that to yourself? Um, David says, I remember listening to Dead Pit as a kid. And even back then, they were making fun of Steve's sleeping habits. Oh, they've been talking about Steve being on pap all time for years. <laughs> literally years. Um, I guess probably from the first time they they met Steve. They, you know, of course, Steve, granted, he used to be able to stay up later because he used to be on the Saturday Nightmares things. You know, th this was back when uncle bill was going to college and so uncle bill couldn't be on a lot of things and so steve was the trusty feeling you know he he would come on those saturday nightmares things and when when ck needed you know assistance you know or have another body on there with him that uh, that makes me feel so damn old uh when i listen to dead pit when i was a kid good god yeah it does me too because i wasn't no damn kid when i started listening to dead pit. i was in i was in my like late 30s or mid 30s when i yeah i think i was closer to 40 i think when i first started listening to dead pit when <laughs> i really you know i was i guess i was in my early 30s and uh then, of course, you know, a couple of years into listening to Dead Pit, you know, it, me and Steve started a relationship. So it's like, 
I, it just blows my mind, you know, the thought that me and Steve will be married for 11 years this August. And it's amazing, too, that we haven't killed each other in the 10 years that we have been married. Um, let's see. Uh, Kathy says she's going to spend the day alone this year, but it's pampering. She said it's pampering myself. Now, yeah, you pamper yourself, Kathy, because that's important for everybody to do, whether you're a, a man or a woman. You've got to pamper yourself sometimes. Uh, Batman, you say, they don't force us. Sometimes it's a personal decision, like, I decide to work the graveyard shift because some meth-addicted asshole uh, likes to not give me a break when I used to work the first shift. Ah, I get you. Um, David says, nah, I wasn't a kid. Probably early to mid-20s. You were still a kid, David. <laughs> Trust me on this. Um, Blitzel says, Kathy, that sounds good. I need to have a home, at-home spa day soon. Yeah, I agree with Batman. To some people, that is considered a kid, David. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me now, getting ever closer to 50, yeah, 20s is a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Family a kid. And Jay's probably saying, Dana, you're still a kid. Getting ever close to 50, yeah. And I'm getting ever close to 60. <laughs> well, my parents are in their 60s. They're getting ever closer to 70. So. <laughs> Bless her heart. Um, <clears throat> Kathy says, Bliss, why well, I'm spending time with the family on Tuesday for grandson John's 11th birthday. Lots of good eats. Oh, man. Yeah, I bet. Birthday parties are always good for eating very well and eating, you know, I hate to call it junk food, but, you know, when, you, when you're when you eating cake and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, boy, is it good, though. Um, but I guess if Jay can stay on here till about 9.15, 8.15 his time, uh, then I guess I'll call it a night because I'm gonna I'm gonna do a few things and try to get some candles made for my mom and my aunt to take to them uh, tomorrow. I make I do make homemade candles as well. So oh yeah, you get the wax and all that. Yeah, doesn't take very long to make them either. You can you can dye the wax any color that you want. I put essential oils in there to give them their scent. Do you have like some kind of mold or something you uh, put them in? Or, or um, well, actually, I have jars. They're amber jars. Uh, they're about eight eight ounces or so. You kind of like mason jars, or, or? Mm, a little bit smaller than than mason jars, but uh, I can actually show you. I got them out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are the uh, these are the jars that I got in. They've got a black top on them. They're just oh, amber yeah. colored. Uh, They'd be pretty. And my yeah. mom. How, how do you make uh, scented candles? Well, I, I guess there could be different ways that you could make them scented. But what I do, Jay, is I use essential oils. Yeah. Um, and I have all kinds of essential oils. You can ask Steve. I've got two containers full of mm -hmm. essential oils. And my, thing, my rule of thumb is the stronger you want the scent, of course, put more drops of the essential oil in the wax. Are you going to do it with that with that candle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom and my aunt both want cedar uh, scent and candles. Oh, I like cedar. I like the smell of cedar. Because mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, around cedar trees. My daddy would make make oh, wood, yeah. wood stuff out of cedar. You know, yeah, you know, I love the smell I, of cedar. I love the smell of wood in general. Like if somebody has just built something and you can smell the. Yes. The wood, oh my gosh, it's amazing. 
Yes, Kathy, the, uh, mine are soy-based. Uh, I use a soy, soy-based soy wax or soy wax. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Blitz. Well, you can get these from Amazon if anybody wants to get into some candle making. How do you heat the oil? Do you just have this to the system? Um, well, hey, I'll just uh, I'll just show everybody all my stuff because I've got okay. it set out uh, ready to, to work on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try something I've never tried before. Alexa, tell me a dirty joke. <laughs> what do you call a muddy chicken that crosses the road twice? A dirty double crosser. Okay. Well, that's that's her dirty joke. That's uh, probably the extent of her dirtiness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've, never, I've never tried that before, but uh, okay. So I bought a while back, I bought a candle making kit. And so you get this metal little pitcher here. And you also get a little spoon to, to stir the wax. Now, what you do with this is you don't have to use a double boiler, but that's what I use because I have one. But you can simply take a pan, put a little water in it, put this in the water that's in the saucepan, and you let it heat, the water heat up, and what it will do is melt the wax. And as it starts to melt, you can add your scents and your dyes to color the, the wax and all that. And then when it gets all melted, of course, you can pour it into the jar or whatever container you're using for your candle. And you just let it sit there and it'll solidify. Uh it doesn't take very long for it to, you know, get do, do you just pour it in just a room temperature jar or do you kind of heat the jar? Um, I usually use room temperature jars. I, I have was thinking like, I guess if it was cold, it would crack or something. But I don't yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend if you're using glass jars that they be extremely cold. Mm -hmm. um, so if your house is really cold for whatever reason, I would, you know, try to warm this up a little bit. So that's a good point to, to make, Jay. Uh, but I also have wicks to put in here. And the wicks that I got this time are the crackling. Has anybody ever had a candle with a crackling wood wick in it? Those are so cool. What you do is you light the wood wick and it will crackle just like a fireplace huh. and uh does, does, so does I, it kind of like sparks fly or or is it just, uh, just uh, maybe a little bit but it's mostly a sound you just hmm. you hear you know it's just like uh when you put wood in a fireplace a real fireplace and and light it hmm. um and it's just soothing to me. It's almost like having a crackling fire, you know, close to you. Um, <laughs> Blissle says, no, I'll order candles from you. Well, I'm all, I'm going to soon be offering candles on the, on the shop. So, um, people will be able to, um, order candles from me as well as tumblers and the booga booga bears and, and all that. Uh, I guess Batman's telling us a, a joke here. He said, a teacher notices a girl with a cat in her <laughs> book bag. And, and she asks why she has a cat in her book bag. Uh, little girl says, I overheard daddy telling mommy, I can't wait for the kids to go to school. Because I'm going to eat that pussy. <laughs> oh, man. Um uh, yeah, uh, Blissful, the, the crackling wick candles are very relaxing. I just, you, but here's the thing. you If you do have a crackling wick candle, um, you're only supposed to burn them for about an hour uh, and then blow them out and wait a little while and then you can light it again. Now, I don't think anything horrible is going to happen. Like your house is not going to explode or something like that. But I think it may cause the wick 
to kind of fizzle out before it's time if you bur if you burn it too long. Hey, Russell. Um, but gang, and I hate to get off here now that Russell's in here, but um, like I said, I've got to do a few things before I settle down completely for the night. <laughs> so um, I do want to thank Jay for being on here with me for the watch along for Star of Echoes. It was fun to, to go back and watch it again. And uh, if TJ, if you're still in here, me and Jay are still sticking to that four on the writing. <laughs> yeah, I'll stick with four. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's a solid four. And uh, I want to thank everybody that joined us tonight to to watch along with us. As a, uh, It sounded like a lot of people that were in here were watching the movie um, as, um, as me and Jay were actually conducting the, the watch along. Um, but before we go, who wants to see the Booga Booga Bears commercial again? I can. Oh, yeah. I know. Up. <laughs> Jay, yeah. Jay wants to see it. All right, so here we go. Booga Bears, this ain't your mama's teddy bear. All righty. So I just love showing them because that, that was probably, I mean, I had fun making all the commercials I made, but that one, I don't know, it just makes me laugh every, every well, there's, time. Well, those like kids it. in the beginning acting like they're huffing spray paint, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Um, uh, Chris, yeah, like says, <laughs> Chris says, get Steve to dress as a clown and recreate that commercial. I don't know. I, I'd like to, Chris, but I don't know if I could get him <clears throat> completely on board with that. Um, but I guess I'm going to call it a night. But again, Jay, thanks for joining me tonight. It was fun once oh, again. Yeah. I enjoyed it. And uh, Jay, do you want to join me for Night Riders tomorrow? Uh, probably, I'll probably uh, join you for that. Um, yeah, that's another one that. Uh, well, we'll talk more about that. <laughs> well, well, Night Riders. I still like the movie quite a bit. You know, uh, you just want to you want to kill Ed Harris. I just want to kill Ed Harris. <laughs> and, and watching it recently, I'm like, Good God, Ed Harris needs to lighten the fuck up. Come on. You're out there on a motorcycle with a stick, and you're playing, and you're playing, uh, you know, du dueling so, du you know, dueling knights of the round table. You know, no, you're not. I'm king. I do, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. don't be so serious, Ed Harris. Get the stick out of your eyes. Yeah, yeah, it's your circus people. Come on, you're putting on a show. But, uh, but I still have fun with it. Yeah, it, it, it's a fun movie, and like I say, it's unusual. Uh, you know, sort of premise for George Romero to be doing. Yeah, this definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Kathy, I guess your your bear and Jay's bear um are kind of well. I hope to make them famous enough that I sell a few of them. Um, well, now, now now these have already been shipped, right? Yes, they oh. are on their way to to you guys. So. <laughs> And uh, I talked to uh, Kathy since she's still here, and maybe she could speak about this real quick before we sign off. 
I talked to Dot earlier, and she said that she's going to some sort of Renaissance fair thing tomorrow. Um, I guess with with their mother, with April. I don't know if John's going, but uh, she said that that's what she was going to do. I asked her what she was going to do for Easter. She said that they're going to go to some kind of. Well, that's what how she described it. She's going to wear. She showed me the dress that she was going to wear and kind of a Renaissance fair kind of thing. So that's cool. I would yeah. like to go to a Renaissance fair. I don't know if it's exactly that's the way she described it. It said it was kind of like that. I don't know if it, you know. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I guess maybe it's like a little, uh, you know, cosplay and uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't like know. That. Uh, but uh, but, but uh, yeah, uh, I uh, like I say, get a good night's sleep and all that. I'll probably, I'll probably be here tonight too. What else am I going to do? <laughs> Not well, that I don't enjoy it. I do enjoy it quite a bit, but uh, <laughs> um, well, I always yeah. enjoy doing these things and like I. I didn't know how exactly I was going to do the terror time tea, but now I've decided that I'm going to do it unless something unusual happens. I'm going to do them on Fridays just before we do our midday show. So um, I'll be doing terror time tea and talking about a couple of movies and giving my reviews on them. And like I said, they'll, they'll, I'm going to try to make sure they're either obscure movies or, you know, movies that people think are really bad. Maybe I can get a renewed interest in them and maybe people will say, well, you know, I'll give it another try or something. But, so are you more of a tea drinker than a coffee drinker? Yeah. I, I And I always have been. And, and, even now, you know, I don't drink hot coffee. Iced coffee drinks are the only things that I drink. As far I as like coffee. iced coffee drinks, but I drink hot coffee. No, I like I like my hot coffee. Um, and uh, and like saying, getting that double caffeinated, you know, <laughs> uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, uh, <laughs> getting another box of that in for, you know, maybe tomorrow. Jay will be yeah. bouncing off the walls. When yeah, ta -ta -ta -ta. But I just drink it in the morning. I don't drink it like that. You know, that's it. Just that's 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 my caffeine, except for like a soda or something. You know, right? Um, but yeah, that's 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 the extent of my caffeine intake. Well, see, I do the iced coffee. I do these damn energy drinks. I do the the zero sugar Mountain Dew and all that stuff. It's a wonder I ain't had a heart attack. Um, as much mm. caffeine as I put in my body. Um, but I guess uh, me and Jay will, will call it a night, but uh, be sure to join us tomorrow night. And anybody else that wants to join me and Jay for the Night Riders watch along, let me know. Um, I will make sure that you get the link for it. And uh, Jay, you said Night Riders is on Tubi as well? It's on Tubi, yeah. All right. That's, that's where I watched it, yeah. So commercials will be on there, but you know, well, it's, it's like fair. tonight with tonight with with uh, uh, Stir of Echoes. There's commercials. I didn't really special. get I didn't get out of sync very often, you know. So no, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to catch up with Tubi. There's some like that damn Amazon, you know, that if you're still getting <laughs> the damn commercials, that it lasts forever, you know. But uh, Tubi's not too bad. Usually, Tubi's a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'd say that's about right. There's a couple every now and then that might run two minutes, but it's usually a minute, uh, mm -hmm. and pretty easy to catch up. So, right, well, okay, and yeah, who, who, you know, all the people here, let's have that many thumbs up. Uh, yeah, and, we've got ten in here now. Yeah. It keeps going like it was down to six, and then it jumped up to ten. <laughs> yeah, there's people start showing up when we're about to sign off. Um, yeah, like Russell did. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and, and as we always say, spread the word, please. Yes. Uh, uh please, uh, like subscribe, uh, share with friends and family that you think might enjoy this content. And if you can financially, I'm not saying people have to or anything, but if you can financially and want to throw a few bones my way, you can join the channel for as little as, uh, $5 a month. And with that $5 a month, you can get me to review any two movies of your choosing. And uh, We need to say know, that again to Kathy. She needs to come yeah. up with the movie. You can even yeah. make me watch The Wicker Man again. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily have to be a horror film. 
Um, mm-hmm. But just a film that, you know, maybe maybe a favorite movie of yours or something like that, or just something that, you you know, that you, you think that Dana uh, would uh, might want to check out. And uh, Or you can torture Dana and make her watch something, you know, that I've said I hate. Well, the, 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 well the, be careful what you say there, because she'd bring up the uh, the uh, 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 Evil Dead remake. You know, remake or <laughs> well, I guess if somebody joined the channel and that was one was of them, I'd have to watch it again. But otherwise, yeah. I won't watch it unless somebody wanted me to review it or right. CK and Uncle Bill did a watch along or something and wanted me to join them. <laughs> on. That would be the only two ways I would ever watch that damn movie ever again. Um, otherwise, no. But uh, we're going we're gonna to get out of here for the night, but tune in tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and we're going to be enjoying Night Riders, and then I'm going to be crying because I'm going to have to go back to work on Monday. So, um, Well, good night, Dana. Good night, good night everybody. Dave. Good night, everybody in chat, and we'll see everybody next time.